Hi, well, my name is Sarah Davis, and I am looking to paddle the length of the Nile from the source where it starts in Rwanda all the way through to Egypt, 6,853 kilometers later. Um, it's expected to take about seven months to do, so it's, it's a fairly lengthy undertaking. Uh, a lot of people ask me why on earth I want to do something like this. And look, for me, I was, I was at a point like I had a job that I really, really loved and everything was great, life was good, it's all rosy, but there was just that something missing and, and I was looking for more fulfillment and, and I'd been going through various books to try and work out what it was and around that time, I saw a couple of documentaries of people who'd done firsts. And one was actually the UK TV presenter, Helen Skelton, when she kite the Amazon. And, and that just struck something in me. It was like, yeah, I really want to do it first. And I want to do something that's kayaking related. And, um, and having seen like Helen and the other person that I'd seen, Damien Riley, you know, they were ordinary people who kind of went after, you know, they weren't your classic Shackletons who you sort of imagine doing expeditions from, you know, almost from birth. And, and they just made me realize that, yeah, you know, this is something I, I could do. So then it was a case of working out what, what my first was going to be. And after a little bit of research, I came up with this expedition um, to pedal the length of the Nile, which, you know, when I, when I worked it out, you know, I, I, it was like an ultimate light bulb moment. And I just got total goosebumps and, and was so excited. And, and so here I am sort of now deep in the planning stages and, and cannot wait to get started. I've just done my remote first aid training. I'm doing Krav Maga, which is Israeli self-defense, Israeli Defense Force self-defense training, um, which is quite interesting, sort of having practiced with, like today we were doing it and he's coming at me with rubber knives. And even though it's rubber, it's still quite intimidating um, and attacked with batons and goodness knows what else. Um, so there's that, I've got a super water rescue technician course, I've got a four day wilderness survival course over Easter, so while everyone's enjoying their Easter eggs, I will be tucking probably to Richie Gloss or something horrible. Well actually I won't because I don't have protein bars with me, but anyway. Um, so, so I've got to do all that planning, there's all the logistics of actually working out the routes and the exit points and the local medical centres and then in parallel raising the money as well. I had a trip to Sudan and Egypt last year where I met some, as amongst local officials, I met some kayakers there who are keen to, who are now keen to be part of the expedition um, and still potentially looking for more people, certainly in the, in the rafting sections, you know, I need to, at the start you've got big rapids. So we need to, I need to be in a raft for that. I'm not an experienced whitewater kayaker. And there are also some fairly large um, hippos and crocs lurking in the rapids. People have got experience in rafting and are interested then, you know, definitely jump on the website and, and, and reach out. Or if there are people locally in the countries I'm going through where we've got the flat water and are keen to, to join then, again, jump on the website and, and get in touch. Look, there were sort of different things. So the, the woman who, who tragically died um, going down the Amazon, one point of, a couple of points of difference. One, she was completely on her own. She was totally unsupported. I will have people with me all the way. And if I was going through areas where we've got intelligence reports to say you could expect host, you know, hostilities, to then have security or potentially go go around. That's not to say you're, you're always going to be able to avoid those situations, but you know it's certainly helping to negate it. My background's actually I'm a risk manager by trade, <laughs> which people always laugh at when I say that. They're like, are you kidding? And you're doing this? It means that the risk management plan is is pretty um, comprehensive, shall we say? Um, and then, yeah, you know, things like the crocodiles. So Henry, Henry um, Katia, who unfortunately also made a very tragic end on the Congo in um, when he was taken by a crocodile. They were, you know, in crocodile territory and in kayaks, which 
you know, you're that much closer to the water, hence in the particularly well-known areas for crocodiles, you know, it would be the rapids and, and would be in rafts. If I'm going through areas where, again, it could be crocodiles, but we're in the kayaks, it's, it's having guides there and, and sort of hopefully people with some sharp eyes to keep an eye out. There's so much keeping me occupied on the to-do list. I haven't had a chance to really freak out. I think as soon as I get there, I'm gonna go, oh my goodness, what have I done? <laughs> About eight months after I came up with the idea, I had already had a book uh, trip booked to go to Namibia to go horse riding across the desert, which was incredible. And, and then I sort of tacked on a trip up to Uganda on the end to sort of go and do an initial recce to go, do I really want to do this? Because obviously it's huge and I can get very excited with new ideas and I thought this one we might need to invest a bit of time in. So I went up there, did a week of white water kayaking there in an area which is crop free. Um, and I came away from it going, yeah, you know, I, I absolutely want to do this, but I'm terrified. And sort of hearing more horror stories of sort of, of crocodile attacks and things like that, it's like, okay, we've, we've really got to take the risk management side of it very, very carefully. And everyone I've spoken to, you know, it's um, failed planning, of, you're planning to fail sort of thing. And, and the planning stage just has to be meticulous. And I've been getting a lot of advisors on, like actually one of Hendry's really good friends, Pete Meredith, was the first person I reached out to, to go, right, tell me tell me what's involved in this. Um, and he's someone who did with, with Hendry in navigation of the Nile. So I'm getting a lot of people advising me. I've had, people have been amazing, right? They've, I've had people contact me via the website, I think they're just terrified something's going to happen to me. <laughs> like, like, I could give you some contacts in country and stuff like that, which has just been gold. You know, people giving up their time and they're like, yeah, I'd love to have a conversation because everyone I speak to has got something to help and to offer with. And, and you know, spending an hour, hour and a half talking to people. So, um, so I've learned, I've learned a hell of a lot in a very short space of time, I have to say. I was working full time um, and it just got a bit too much. I was also training a hell of a lot. I had, I'm, I'm a kayaker, I do ocean um, kayaking. I have world championships coming up in, in Hong Kong. I was trying to organize this um, and keeping everything going, doing some talks and trying to organize and plan and just was spinning so many plates and it's like, okay, I've got to, so I drop back to four days a week, which isn't massive, but that's made all the difference. Um, and yeah, you know, I'm a, as I said, a risk, a risk manager. And what I'll do is, is take a, a leave without pay for a period of time um, while I go off and, and do this. I love, I love adventure. Yes, I'm very competitive. I think underlying both of them though is challenge and the, the need to, to be challenged and challenge myself. And when I was trying to do the, where is this fulfillment gonna come from? I was reading Daniel Laporte's book, The Heat, no, The Desire Map, The Heat Map, The Desire Map, I can't remember. Anyway, it's all about trying to work out how do you want to feel and then what makes you feel like that? So instead of the go after your passion sort of thing, it's just coming at it from a slightly different angle. And that need for challenge really came up. And it's like, well, what makes me feel that challenge? And it's going out on adventures and it's going and doing races and pushing myself and, you know, doing races I've never done before, the longer or whatever it is. So yeah, I think that's sort of the common denominator. My move to Australia was, was thanks to working for National Australia Bank in London. So I started working for them in, it was 2000, 2000, maybe 2001. And 2003, they very kindly shipped me out to Melbourne. Um, initially, it was just on a two year working visa. And nearly 15 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> I had three years in Melbourne and then moved up to Sydney, where I am now living in Bondi. Um, and living the dream. <laughs> I joining the surf club was one of the best things I've ever done because I, you know, I'd done Melbourne and I'd set myself up, and established, a, you know, a network and friends and everything else, and then you know, three years later, bang, having to start that all over again. And so I thought, well, you know, I want to, I'd like to get involved in the community, but you know, do a bit of giving back. 
um, and in something that maybe I could meet some people as well. So I joined up and did my bronze medallion, which is what you have to, the qualification you have to go through to become a surf lifesaver. It was tough, it was really tough sort of going out, because I obviously haven't grown up in surf. And suddenly they're saying, right, go out and go and rescue, you know, the, your fake drowning body. It's like, oh my God, okay. But just learned, I got so much more out of it that I think than I've, I've put in, you know, all the skills that I've learned. I started teaching the bronze, so you get, you know, do that, taking on different roles on around the club, got involved in so many things. And then it just opened up these, all these new sports that I didn't even, you know, knew existed. And, you know, I don't know, like board paddling, full on ocean swimming, you know, I know you go and swim in the in the pool, you go and have a dip in the water to cool off, that would be as much as I'd sort of ever done in ocean swimming and soft sand running, again, you know, you only run across the sand when it's really hot, you wouldn't actually voluntarily go and run 10 kilometres on soft sand, right? Because <laughs> it's crazy. Um, you know, and then got into yeah, the ball paddling and then surf skis. So, you know, if I hadn't joined North Bondi Surf Club, I, I really don't think I would be doing that. And I wouldn't have the, you know, the network kind of thing of friends who've just been so incredibly supportive of what I'm doing and helping me and everything else. So it really was, yeah, life changing for me. No, oh, I'm certainly going to be camping for a lot of it through the beginning. So the trip goes. Rwanda, um, dips into Tanzania, Uganda, so across Lake Victoria, Uganda, South Sudan, Sudan, Egypt. Um, as we sort of get further towards the end, then then it'll be less less camping. But yeah, for me, it's going to be a lot of camping and then taking on supplies, having to have water filters because there won't be places to go and, and buy foods um, and needing to be for quite relatively long stretches, completely self-sufficient as a crew. It won't be one of the short white water kayaks. It will be most likely it's going to be plastic. So it's going to be because it needs to be hard wearing from bashing rocks and having to be dragged out. And so I use for training and competition the uh, basically fiberglass, and you know you you look at them, you can deem those things. They're they're relatively fragile, and it wouldn't it wouldn't last five minutes up and up. And then it's almost like a Russian doll. It sort of fits inside each other, the various bits, and then you put it into a backpack. So it's not, you know, small, but it's got to be something that I can carry because I've got to put it in the raft as potentially you've got a portage round. If there are big rapids that we can't go around, you've got to be able to carry the gear. Oh, I tell you what I've seen more of is dolphins. Um, and on my website there's, I don't know if you there's an intro video and when we were out filming it, um, we, we were just about finished and the IRB, which is the, sort of the, the rescue um, rubber duck boat, came over and said, oh, did you see the dolphins? I'm like, where the dolphins? I'm like, where, 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 and so the dolphins are just sort of swimming around me and, and I've had that quite a few times. And even in the harbour, I remember I was doing from um, the, the race in Hawaii and I was doing a really long paddle and, and I was just over it after, I don't know, five hours of paddling and then the dolphins sort of pop up next to me and I'm going, oh, that's nice. Particularly when I realise they're sort of doing this and they're not doing this, so they're, they're friendly and, and not sharks. I've seen, I've seen sharks a couple of times, um, and everyone says that they're out there all the time. And I just, there are some spots where I will, I get completely freaked out. And go, oh, it feels really sharky, and I'll turn around and go back. But I try, try not to think about it. And seen whales when I've been out as well, which is pretty, which is amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing um, a lot of social media as much as I can. You know, at the moment, I'm slowly trying to build the following. But even here, it's like I know what I should be doing on my Instagram, which is at Pedal the Nile. Um, you know, every day, and it's all about um, being consistent and blah 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 blah. It's just hard to do on top of everything else. And, it's, um, and then I've got Facebook, which is Pedal the Nile too, and I, I put out a newsletter. And, you know, I'd love that to be going at kind of monthly, but it tends to be more like every six weeks to two months. Um, 
that sort of current where and then I've got a YouTube channel as well so I've put a few videos up and just sort of gradually doing more of more of those I did my trip to Egypt interview with the first Olympic kayaker um, my trip to Hawaii um, Christmas up in Avalon where I just went away and just did some really lovely chill paddles so just trying to and I, I love that stuff you know I love being creative and, and doing the, the photos and the video but yeah, it does, it does take up a huge, huge amount of time. You know, what I want to achieve with this trip, it, you know, it's, it goes a long way beyond just going from start to finish and being the first. Um, for me, it's like, you know, I knew I wanted to use this to add some value and want a higher purpose with this. So there are sort of two things I'm doing. One is raising money for Care Australia. So they are part of Care international global humanitarian aid organization working to end poverty and what I absolutely love about them the reason the main reason why I chose them is they put women and girls at the center of all their initiatives because they know we're not going to end poverty until we've got equal rights and opportunities and the work they do is incredible um, they work in all the countries I go I'm going through that's really key so I need to have the following to one to help raise money and you know, I want to raise a hundred thousand Aussie we're up to 25 which is awesome um, thanks to sort of one of my actual expedition sponsors who's really been helping with that um, so that's sort of one part of what I want to achieve out of it and the other part is trying to build a community of winning, winning women and that's just women going out and inspiring and encouraging each other to you know get outside and dream big and go on adventures I mean not as crazy in the same as, as big as this but just to, to get out of you know the cities and, and just go and, and have fun and be capable of and see what you enjoy doing um, and and just you know I was inspired as I said by by Helen and, and and others and it's that just want to pay that forward I would never have come up with this I don't think if I hadn't seen that so I'm hoping what I will do will you know spot the imagination of a few people so again to achieve that I've got to be talking about it and, and using the social media, which is great. You know, it's such an incredible tool to reach people um, and, and hopefully spread the message. And, and I know with this expedition, I'm, I may not make it to the end first attempt, or I may need to take it, who knows? But, you know, I just, my, that's what my message is to people. It's like, if you've got a drink, just give it a go. You know, you don't want to die one drink.